although we have a pretty powerful API query builder in BricksForge, if you are a Bricks user, we also have one in GreenShift if you prefer to use the block editor. Builderius also allows you to use an API, so also Jet Engine, but I still prefer the flexibility I get using dynamic shortcodes. And in today's video, we'll be taking a look at an example where I pull data from Airtable into a Bricks website using dynamic shortcodes, and I'm able to do some manipulation like some display conditions based on that dynamic data. So now let's take a look. So here on screen, we have a four column table in Airtables, which is just showing some list of topic ideas. So the first column says name, the second one says title, the third is plugins, and then the fourth is the status. So what I want to do is create a sort of roadmap on my website, which basically divides the titles into three columns based on the status. So one column for the to-do, the other one for the in-progress, and the other one for what has already been done. I also want to be able to display what plugin it is specifically for. So we have the three columns. Now let's take a look at the finished product. So here we have the finished design showing three different cards. The first card showing the to-do, which shows the title as the plugin name, followed by the topic idea. Then we have the one for in progress and done. So now let's take a look at how I created the query in dynamic shortcodes and how I was able to apply the data in Bricks. I was able to get the API get URL from the Airtable API documentation. I first created a token and the way the query is, it's just HTTPS column double slash API dot Airtable dot com slash V zero slash some ID slash the base. Then it has a header of authorization, bearer, and then your token. So now let's switch over to the Power shortcode in dynamic shortcodes, and I'll show you how I was able to replicate this into dynamic shortcodes. So here we are in the power shortcodes under dynamic shortcodes, and this is how the API is applied. So the same way we have the curl, that's how we start with the API colon, then we put the URL, same way we have the URL here, then followed by the header. So in this case, the header is a key value pair. So we start with the at symbol and put headers equal to then the authorization and bearer. This is a key value pair again. So we use another array. So we do array at authorization equal to bearer. And then we put the key. This key I've hidden it in an options page. So that's why I'm using another short code called option column. And then I put the key for the options page. To learn more about APIs, I'll leave a link to the documentation in the description so you can learn how the API works. So this is API column, the URL at the key argument lists, and it gives you some examples of how you apply headers, authorization, bearer, and then your token and everything. It's all in the examples. You can go ahead and check them out. So here we have the API just so that we don't have to keep requesting multiple times, I now wrapped that API in a cache. So it will be caching every day so that we don't have to keep requesting too many times. So I put cache, then I give it a name, and then I just put the query into that name. So whenever we call the name, it will return from cache instead of returning from the API get request. So this is all we need to pull in the API query into our WordPress website. Now to apply it to a page, all we need to do is copy the shortcode name, which is power colon, and then the title we give the shortcode. Then you can come over to your edits page. So it can be bricks, it can be in the block editor, it can be elemental, it can be oxygen, breakdance, however you want to apply it. 
in this example, I'm using bricks. So let me go to the bricks page and I'll just drop in maybe a short code widget here so we can see how the exact return of the query is for short code. I guess this is one improvement that maybe dynamic short codes can do so that we can preview our short code directly in the Power Short Codes area rather than having to come into a page before we can preview it. I hope they can improve it. But here we have a short code widget. I'm just using the short code widget because that's the only one that I've found that displays dynamic data in the builder. But if you want to display it on the front end, then you can use any element of your choice. So I'll just paste in my short code here. Then it is returning an array, but the way Power Short Codes work is that they return it as a string. So right now, what is being returned on this page is a string. If you want to actually use that array, we have to now call the value. So we say at value exclamation mark. So now what happens is that this will now be put on the page as a value, not as a string. And that now allows us to be able to do some manipulations to this value. For example, I may want to use the D-U-M-P-E-R-R. -R. So that means I'm dumping to the error. Then let me go ahead and save it. That doesn't show anything on the backend in Bricks. In other page builders, it might show up in the backend, but in Bricks, you have to check it on the front end. And what we do is just scroll down to the bottom and you see this error. That's what we're doing. We're just basically dumping the output into the error. Now, this is how the array is returned. Let me maybe copy it into something like VS Code so that it's easy for you to see. So I'll copy it and I'll open VS Code. And let me just paste it there. So this is how the array is. Let me format it. Okay. So you can see how it is indented. That is the same way we can access so basically what we have now is first we have an array. If you want to access that array, the way we do accessing of arrays in dynamic short codes is using the double pipe symbol. Whereas if we want to use a loop, we use the for. So you say for column for a loop. But if you want to access the array, so not just looping through the entire array, we want to access a value in the array, then we use the double pipe symbol. So the way I do it is I'm going to say that my power short code double pipe symbol records that will not give me access into the array in the records. And that array in the records is now a loop. So we have zero, we have one, and so on, two. So that is the loop. So first I will access the records in the array. Then I will loop through the values that are there. Then I can now use some conditions because what we are seeing now is the fields inside other array is another array. So we're having an array within an array within an array. So that is one reason why I like dynamic short codes because with some of the other ones I've seen, when you now start getting into nested loops, then you have to start doing so much manipulation. Whereas with dynamic short codes, you can see it visually. So you can keep doing whatever you want. Whenever you want to access an array, you use the double pipe symbol. Whenever you want to display the entire array as a loop, you use the four and so on. So let's start. So I want to access these records in the array. So I'll come back to my short code. And one thing I can do is something simple, like maybe set this into a variable so that rather than having to write this long power, I can just use a variable name and access that variable name. So let me say the variable is now called a T and close it. Okay. So now we've gotten our variable. Now I can start accessing this variable anywhere I want. Or let me do it as set default in case I want to use it somewhere else. Okay. Then now I can now start using this RT. So I'll say get RT double pipe symbol records. But like I showed, it was going to give us another array, which is this array of 0, 1, and so on. So I will now loop through that array because this is the array of the items that I want. So I'll use the for loop. So within this get, I'll start with a for. So it's a for items 
or item in this array I want to return maybe just get the item for now and close it so I'm putting it in square braces because I may want to add some other extra things into that template because this is for placeholder the array that I'm accessing and then the template that I'm returning okay and I'll close it and maybe I'll say add some separation so separation equal to maybe a comma and we get another array so that is how we keep accessing it so now we are in these records and then we're in the zero in the records but what we're trying to get is the fields within this array so now i'll come back to this get item because that is the value we're returning and i'll start accessing the array so the first stage of the array is the fields so i'll say fields but that will also still give me another array so that is one of the challenges because you're having an array within an array within an array with all the other ones that i've tested sometimes it starts to break because of how the nesting is so now i'm accessing the fields and within that fields i want to now get maybe the title so i'll do another double pipe symbol and i'll say it's a capital letter yes title and now you see we get our titles update that we get the other one and then we can now use maybe a ul structure so i'll say something like ul and close it with slash ul so rather than this separation i'll delete the separator and in the template i'll now put the li so within the template i want each of the template item that is being returned to be an li and you see we get our list of items and that is the first step so let me go ahead and close the li just to make sure that nothing breaks then Within this for loop, I can now create conditions because right now it is returning all of my items. So whether it has the status equal to to do or it has the status equal to in progress or the status equal to done, it will return everything. So what I can now do is create a condition that will check the status. And then if the status is to do, then go ahead and display that element otherwise don't display anything so i'll do the same thing and the only thing i'm going to change is the last array item that i'm accessing which is the status so i'll come back to this get and i'll copy everything inside that template starting from the get item up to the title then let me make them into new lines so that i can easily see them So what I'm going to do is that I want to return this li only if the status is equal to to do. So what I'll do is now put the if condition. So I'll say if colon and I'll close the if. Then I'll put my condition. I'll say equal to. So if this condition of instead of title this time, I want to put status is equal to the to do then go ahead and display this template let me wrap that template in a square brace because there are many things happening in the template otherwise return nothing so now this is it or we can say maybe return yes just so that we know what's happening so it is retrieving the first two. The third one is a yes. Let's go ahead and see the air table itself so that we can confirm. So here we see we have the first one is update. That is in to do. We get update in to do. Then we have the other ones. Then the green shift is in progress. So that's why you don't see any green shift here anymore and so on. So the ones that are in progress or that have the done they get removed only 
the ones that are to do are there. So let's go ahead and remove this again. And that's how easy it is to start manipulating all of this data. The only downside is that we have to be writing the template ourselves or we can create a bricks section template. Then we'll just use the template name as a shortcode in this square brace and we get the same thing. So that's what you can use to create our template if we want to design the template ourselves. The only problem is that it's going to be like magic areas. So you have to go to somewhere else, create your template, then move that template ID and put it in here and so on. But this one gives you ultimate control over the HTML itself. And that's how I was able to create these three sections. Because if you go ahead and display the sections, you can see I have my card, I have my heading, then my shortcode is my list of items. The second one is another list of items and so on. So that's how we can use dynamic shortcodes to manipulate API data in a more flexible way compared to other implementations of API query builders. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you think it is good that we have this API query builder in dynamic shortcodes? Is it too complex? How can it be improved? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.